<laughs> we ain't getting no sleep, y'all. Breaking news out of Tokyo. COVID outbreaks, not good news, but some things are going down in the village and we're going to talk about it. We're also going to talk about teams possibly being ousted from the games due to insufficient drug testing. I know some people are mad, but I'm mad. The rules are the rules, though, but we'll get into it. Uh, Rock Nation in the building? But lastly, we have some amazing guests joining us today. We'll be joined by Jay Scepter and Omar Craddock. Some of my favorite people. Some of my favorite people as well. So a whole lot to get in in two hours. So let's just get into it. Well, before, firstly, let's get into this, these fits, a little the fit, fit check. The fit of the day, the fit check. Like, um, I'm just going to let you guys know. Yeah. The cast is Jack. Like, get, yeah. But, yeah. And I just do shoes that... Like, <laughs> We need to adjust the camera so you guys can get the. I didn't time. Oh, yeah, we got to do a shoe plan. Yeah. Look, I'm going to just take mine off. I got on flip flops. And I've got on the new Cactus Jack, so I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I'm like wearing a skirt, which I never do. And I'm over here like though. busting it open. We have an activist coming on today. Also, so. also can I just. One second. You guys, get into the clips. Now get into the shoes. Now get into the clips. Now get into the shoes. The now get into the clips. Uh oh. It's called coordinated to coordination. I just lost off, off my laptop. But let's get into it because we have a lot of things to talk about. First things first, Sam Kendricks. You want to let a two-time world champion, one of my favorite peoples. He gave me a knife, so he will forever be in my heart because weapons are. We should also mention he's in the army. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you guys might have remember him for the, that viral moment that happened at Rio where the U.S. national anthem was going on. And he was running down the runway with his pole and he stopped and stood at attention. Um, but he uh, tested positive for COVID in his daily test. And so he is out of competition. He is the bronze medalist from um, bronze from Rio. From Rio. Uh, and also an Argentine pole vault, Germain uh, Chia Leo is also positive with COVID. So due to the um, regulations, Sam will be out of competition because he competes on the 31st. And he is, when you have a positive test, you have to go into seven, at least seven days of isolation. Um, so we did all of that research on like the isolation and stuff. Are we still testing them throughout so, the isolation process? So what will happen is, is if you, test positive in that daily test, how yesterday we talked about the athlete spitting in the vial. Then you, if you get a positive test from there, then you go to getting a PCR test, which is a more accurate test. If you then get another positive test, you get like that, that nose swab that goes all the way to your brain. And <laughs> which if, doesn't even have to go up into your brain, but, but that's- And then from there, if you are also are positive, you go into isolation. So then you're moved to a hotel that is guarded by the Japanese government. Aye, aye, aye. Um, you are in isolation for, for seven days. You get your meals delivered to get your meals delivered to you, and you have to be in there for seven days. Um, you at minimum. Can, at minimum, you might be able if you they will administer a test to you on the sixth and seventh day, and you might be able to be released early if you get a negative test. But um, if not, you will be you can be in there for a maximum of ten days. Um, in um and in that. We're talking to Cecilia. Yes, so he's he out, 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 out. Um, because yeah. his competition starts today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, I mean, on the 31st, and he has to be in isolation for seven, for seven days. days. And um, we talked about mental health. The U.S. medical staff uh, is calling athletes that are in isolation every single day to check in to make sure their mental well being is, is okay, because obviously you're taking a huge blow right. um, be, by your Olympic dreams being shattered. And then, nice and then you're then you're immediately put to be by yourself to just deal with that. Um, also, if you are in close contact, and close contact is defined by you were with someone for more than at least fifteen minutes without mask within um, three feet of each other. Mm -hmm. If you are in close contact with someone who is tested positive 
for COVID, um, you will be put into close contact, which means that you will be, oh, so you'll be moved into quarantine for 14 days, which means you can still be eligible to compete and train, but you will be moved into a hotel to quarantine and you will have go under a modified training pro protocol, which means that um, you will go, you can go to training, but instead of going on the team bus, you will get a driver that is wearing an N95 mask and you go to tr training and, the and you can only be around people who are necessary. Basically, you're only be necessary for your training. So basically only your coach who is masked can be around you. And you, when you're in the hotel, your meals will also be delivered to you. Um, so that's what's happening. Um, I know that I'm, I'm just, I'm curious, like why there's so many cases happen, like, and I mean, so many we're seeing yesterday, not confirmed yet, but we're hearing three positive yeah. tests. We know of one other, other than Sam, um, yeah. who's also in the pole vault, but like with all the protocols in place, with all the preventative measures, with everyone knowing what's at stake, how is it still possible to well get covid where is do we know where the covid is coming from in the village i would feel like everyone would hope that the village itself is the bubble right well like they really didn't have time to do a full bubble like the like basketball and it's also like it's an international event and right. also um yesterday tokyo recorded its third straight Dang. day of record cases um record daily cases of covid and neighboring neighboring prefunctures to Tokyo, including Osaka, are have been added to state of emergency measures. Um, and so teams are also doing their own thing to implement protocols. For example, the Australian track and field team, they are on quarantine. I'm not they, even mad at it. Yeah, they were they were told to go to their room and, <laughs> and, stay, and there. Stay, stay there with their mask <laughs> on in the room by the I'm not even and mad they're getting at it. they're get like um I have a Someone on Tokyo, she said they're they're they are having people deliver meals to the people who are under quarantine. And so she was like, "Oh, I saw there was to go plates, and I tried to get one." And they said, "No, you have to like have a reason to have it to go plate, aka you're bringing a meal to an athlete in quarantine." Wow. wow. Yes. But I'm so as an athlete, I personally feel like, and I've been like, I said it before, like COVID, like I was like, Corey, you vaccinated? <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you need to have a mask on um and i stay with my mask in these streets same even when the cdc said like you don't have to wear it which now they're now ordering us to wear it indoors vaccinated or not but anywho like as an athlete who's waited five years for this moment like i i'm torn because it's like you want to enjoy the olympic experience you want and it just feels like every step of the way the experience is being, you know, taken tainted away. and yeah. taken away. So like, you've got to be quarantining, even if you've taken every precaution. Now you, you, every athlete there has to be like paranoid, like, because if I get this thing, I'm out. Yeah. And um, Sam came, he, he did an Instagram post where he basically explained what happened to him mm -hmm. and that he's out and he was expressing. His he also explained that he took two tests, two negative tests before getting on the plane one since getting there mm -hmm. um and then i think it was his fourth test that came back positive and then he I, i'm assuming had to go through that pcr thing yeah um and i mean the testing we can talk about that because you know yeah um but basically um he was imploring that the the fourth place at trials matt ludwin take his place yeah but i don't know if there will be it, time it possible to get him over you there what, and though? get in tested and go through all the protocol because they have to self-isolate for so yeah i don't I know ready to say it is possible in the sense that in 2007 in the men's hurdles i don't remember exactly what happened why um david payne was um allowed to come over but we had someone go down whatever it was someone in the top three went down david payne flew to osaka actually um how Oh, it says, look here, he's trying to make it to Tokyo ASAP. Yes. Because here's the thing. Here's so the thing. wait, let if me you finish. Stay ready, if you, you ain't, ain't got to get be ready. ready. So that's my point because David Payne got to Osaka the day before competition and came home with a medal. So it's possible. I'm happy to see this. 
Thank you, team, for answering our question and having this ready for us. Shout out to our team. Shout Love out them. Ludwig. Safe travels and good luck. So there's drama on that end with COVID. And then on the other end, <laughs> there's more drama with some teams not being able to have athletes compete due to um, insufficient drug testing. Yes. I mean, each each country, each athlete is required to have. And we're speaking for track and field. We don't know what other sports do, but I imagine it's a similar standard. You have to have a certain number of drug tests um, that year before going into the world championships and the Olympics. And we've talked about this before when we talked a bit about anti-doping, that your federation makes sure that the athletes have a certain number of tests before entering the village. Um, and so we talked about, you know, sometimes you kind of see you get tested more when you're getting closer to nationals or when it's time to leave, but you know that there is a standard that has to be met. And unfortunately, some athletes may be ousted from the games because their federation did not ensure that they had the necessary tests. Yeah, so the AIU declared 20 athletes from seven countries ineligible for the games because they didn't meet a minimum testing requirements under Rule 15. Um, three of uh, Come on with the official rules. <laughs> Look. We did our homework, okay. <laughs> um, three of those countries, um, three of those seven countries um, are Morocco, Kenya, and Ethiopia. And they are on the WADA category A watch list. So that's also something to consider that, like, you guys, you guys should be extra vigilant because you know that you're having scrutiny. And then I'll, so, you need the make sure, so you need to make sure your athletes are getting tested. Um, of those 20 athletes, 10 of them are Nigerian and they're banned from competition. Um, because, Has that been official? Are they officially banned? Um, from what I've seen, they're officially banned. Um, and what's crazy is that all of the athlete, all, all of those 10 athletes are in Tokyo right now and they found out there and they, and none of them have had a positive test. They just don't, they just don't, don't have, have a enough necessary tests. test. Yeah. Um, so the Nigerian Federation bears complete responsibility on this because it's up to them to make sure, um, that their athletes get tested. How these athletes kind of felt the cr cracks is that a lot of these athletes are U.S. based athletes and in the collegiate system, and the NCAA testing do not comply with WADA standards. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and some of the athletes who had a hope for a medal chance, one of which is Ruth Osoro, she's the indoor and outdoor NCAA uh, champion in the triple jump, and she has been declared ineligible because. She was in that U.S. system. They assumed that the NCAA lake testing would be sufficient, and it wasn't. Um, and Blessing. Obakari. You can talk about her. Um, <laughs> uh, Blessing Obakari. Obakari, sorry. Um, she's a top sprinter, medal contender. She is eligible um, mm -hmm. to compete, but she did tweet yesterday um, criticizing the Nigerian Federation. And she's been critical of the Nigerian Federation for a number of things, but this is just the last... Um, thing to add to the list of where Nigeria and we, we could say Nigeria yeah, and has she's one of their the biggest ball. and she's one of their biggest stars probably one of their biggest hopes for um a medal we've talked about her um she before. Ran 1063 I, this year can we so. pull up that um can we just pull up and like focus on the tweet that she actually yeah, put, the tweet that was up before this um time. where she basically was saying like look you have athletes because it's one thing to be like you miss a test. It's another thing to say, like, I didn't get test orders and I can't order tests because it has to be spontaneous. Right. And now I don't get a community in the Olympics. And like, I'm supposed to be representing you. Like, right. like your job is to make sure I can represent your country. Like that's your whole job as a federation yeah. is to make sure your athletes are taken care of. Yeah. I think it's insane that athletes dreams are getting taken away off of something completely out of their control. That is completely preventable. Mm -hmm. And they're miss they're gonna miss out on on money opportunity like you're training all of this and you and you lost off of, off of someone's um what's the word i'm looking for negligence negligence exactly mm -hmm. i i feel awful um for these athletes that are um being affected by this but i'm the one that always brings the <laughs> i don't even know what to call it but if i were one of the athletes on the other team and in competence you're right in competition that knows that yes incompetence thank you um that knows that like i've done everything that i'm supposed to do i've taken all of my tests i've you know 
I don't know that I would want to compete against the athletes who haven't met the requirements that the rest of us have had to meet. So it's really a double-edged sword. I think uh, the Nigerian athletes definitely should hold their federation accountable for this. Um, but also, we've said it time and time again, the rules are the rules. And unfortunately, um, they will have to miss out on this because we have to advocate for a clean and fair sport. So, um, oh, come on, Bob. Blessings has 21 Olympic, World, and African Championship medals. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I just, um, I just feel like I would be irate. I would, if, if I was in their place, um, I would burn, I'm, I'm burning it. I'm burning the all of Tokyo down. <laughs> like absolutely, absolutely not. I'm going to Nigeria and someone's going to have to pay. Like someone's getting, someone's gotta answer I this. like, I know I'm not supposed so, so to promote violence, but in this case I am because what, what in the app? No. No, no, no. Like, you know I'm an advocate for athletes. I just, like, it's your job. Like, do your job. Okay, so, um, it's going to be pushed back. Um, okay. So, I just, so we'll talk about yeah, the last nation. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. <laughs> um, I'm just, I need to take a breath. Um, Cecilia, also, thank you. We really took our time to... This one was up. I went to sleep. I was up. I was up I, I'm on three hours of sleep, but guys. But she I'm on really th took her time to do her research. I did a little bit, but she <laughs> she was in on the things. I was like, I need my sleep. <laughs> well, things were... Ha like, I was getting ready for bed, and then things started popping up, because, like, the time changed. And so I just was like, well, I got to I gotta be ready to for tomorrow. I want to bring y'all... The, the accurate LT. tea. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to move things around a little bit because our guest needs a little bit of time. It's fine. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, Rock Nation. So, <laughs> first of all, let me just first, say. First of all, time out. Like, I just, because I'm tired, I, I need I need to just take a break. I need to all pop, 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 pop it. Um, today's flavor yeah. is vintage cola. It is the morning. And yeah. We're, we're having our pro probiotics because I'm just, I'm tired, y'all. And not because I didn't get any sleep last night because. Because you didn't get no sleep last night. I know I came in here on 10. As you're a, always on 10. Imagine if I had coffee in my life. If, imagine if I ingested coffee. I don't want to imagine that. Hey, um, happy birthday, Aisha. Um, Team Leo, Y'all need gang. to get paid for this. Um, I'm just going to do my daily plug. Send a black woman some money today. Um, it doesn't have to be us. Just cash app, Venmo, um, quick pay. No, I'm tired because I love my sport and I love the people that are in my sport. And it, it like, even though my Olympic dreams are over, um, I still, I still want the best for the athletes out there because I know personally, like what what, what it takes to get yeah, there. Yeah, and I know what they've sacrificed and like. And it's like, dang, like COVID, like it's, it's, it's one thing if like, okay, you get kicked out cause you're, you're, you're cheating or you aren't good enough, but like your own negligence your own, because, for, for yeah, things that are out of your hands. But like, yeah, to like this, this pandemic, this, this virus that is, is stopping that not only delayed these dreams, but are also just taking dreams off the table um, to see like people just not doing their jobs and, and it's costing people their dreams. It like, it, it's, it's hurtful. And I, and I, and I'm like, I'm not an emotional person, you know, that, but I'm, I'm like, I got a little something where, where my heart should be. Um, and I can only imagine what these athletes are feeling because like, it's like, dang, like, like if, if it was because I wasn't good enough, okay. But or if it was because I, I messed up all right. But I think then also add that these athletes are already in Tokyo and in Tokyo by themselves with, with no the family, with no, you know, you, yeah, you're there with your teammates, but like. <laughs> All right, let's just talk about, let's just yeah. talk about how some athletes that I'm like, y'all done, y'all done got into t Tokyo. Listen, so Aisha actually asked me yesterday about Rock Nation. And honestly, when she sent me the message, I was like, Rock Nation? Like, what is Jay-Z doing there? 
<laughs> Seriously. But honestly, before that, I did see some Russian athletes in the gymnastics and I was like, I'm confused. I am confusion. Why and how is Russia there if they're banned? And and we'll get into the details of the loopholes and such, but is it fair that they're there? Because I, I see both sides where there was this state side this statewide um run doping machine and can we break that, that was down sponsored a little bit? by the state of russia like so, can you imagine if if our president was like let's get drugs into our athletes so that we can show the dominance of the united states of america mm-hmm. that's essentially what russia did it, it basically but if i as the athlete was not involved in that should i be penalized for that as the athlete as the personal athlete as the individual athlete i feel like no (laughs) so as the american athlete i'm like huh someone's asking to explain because they don't understand the russian situation can you break that down so it was basically a state-sponsored uh doping ring where essentially um as corey said the president putin was basically like whatever we got to do to get these medals including cheat we gonna do so it was stuff it was stuff like actually using performance enhancing drugs it was stuff like switching out urine and it was so intricate and detailed and planned out that the testing people were in on it like they were the ones switching out the pee and so everyone from the president coaches staff it they were in on it and if you want a real breakdown like there's a film I think it's still on is Netflix. It Icarus? Icarus. It is like it gave oh, me Netflix. chills watching. We're it. not giving plugs, but yes, watch uh, the film Icarus. <laughs> it, and it breaks up because, like, so for example, we talk about testing, and um, when you get tested, you pee in a cup, and then you pour the cup into these glass bottles. The glass bottles have lids that you have to turn on, like the machine twist on. has to open them. It's if that. you twist, you can't. You twist it on, but you cannot twist it off. And a machine has to um, take it off, but the way the machine takes it off, they break, they break the top. So there's no way to open it and like re put it on. Mm-hmm. And there is a like a specific number on the top, so you can't even like replace it with a new top because the number has to match the bottle. So it's very hard. Basically, what happened was like it was at the um, what's the Winter Olympics that Russia had? So she. They had like a lab in the. So they they had it like this like this at back the door, Olympics. They had this doing back this. door lab where they had like Russian athletes like, hey, we know if this athlete gets tested, they're gonna get popped. So they had this lab that like basically, they created their own machine that they were like re- put, re- replacing the urine and then putting back the, the uh, top. It was it was very intricate. So so the, what's happening now is that you have these athletes who are able to, Russian athletes who say like- Hey, I wasn't a part of that. Yeah, I shouldn't be punished and for so that. They, they, or they were able to prove that they were clean, not a part of that. And so we, there's 335 Russian athletes um, competing um, in Tokyo um, as neutral athletes. So they can compete, but they can't represent their country. Um, they they can wear like Russian colors, and but it's like it's funny because we call them like they're not they're, they're not, representing not representing Russia. Russia but we but... call them Russian na- na- neutral athletes, but. Um, they can't play their national anthem, but if a Russian athlete was to win, they're playing a symphony <laughs> by a Russian composer. <laughs> make it make sense. Um, make it make sense. So it's, 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 yeah. I, I don't understand. I don't understand because if, if they're going to serve a band, then shouldn't they serve a band? But then I also understand if I wasn't involved in that, then I shouldn't be penalized for that. And and but I I guess where my issue is That's okay because that dude is fire <laughs> the composer. Um, <laughs> if I if if the athletes are going to be allowed to compete, then I don't feel like we should see anything that says Russia. We shouldn't see a flag. We shouldn't see like well, if they're there's, neutral. There's no, there's no fl- they're not allowed to fly their flag. But you're in Russian colors, and and like, like they, they should had, be competing in black. They had to change their uniforms because it had like a bear, which represented um, Russia. Um, and I get it because if if like y'all are out here doing mess and I'm clean and I'm like, but yeah, they should basically be yeah. Be rep- the name should not. Aisha, I agree. The name should not include the country's name. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, and here's the thing is 
it was funny because I was reading this uh, article, I think, by CNN, and they were basically saying, like, Russia stays changing their name. So, like, they've been the Soviet Union. They've been, you know, <laughs> you know uh-huh. all this. So, like, what's it, it – especially if it's, like, the Russian what – is, what is it called? Olympic Committee. Can I think Cecilia said, my thing is, if it's so widespread, I don't know how you can feel comfortable with 300 plus saying out of everyone in our country, we're clean and high level. Come again? Yes. And so 10 of those athletes are track athletes. Um, I don't, I, I've been doing my research, but I did not get the names and the events of those 10 athletes, but if y'all want it, I'll, I'll go find it. (laughs) Um, and I just, I think that it's like, there's always going to be that level of doubt because how do you prove that you weren't cheating? Like the whole point, like the whole point is to, when you cheat, it's not get caught. Like maybe they were just, and I'm not saying the 10 athletes that are competing are dirty. I'm just saying the shadow of doubt, the shadow of doubt exists. And I feel like it's all Russia is still out. Russia is still being represented in the Olympics and they have a man. Aisha, this is a good one. They also should not be allowed to compete as a team for their medals to count in team medal count. Does their team, does, is it? it uh, apparently there is a medal. Cause I mean, ROC and they're going to have like the, the medal yeah. count is the thing when we're in the village. Like that's literally like the thing between countries. Like, ah, we're at such and such number yeah. of medals. Like, and that, that, and that is... was the whole point. It's like they wanted to show Russian dominance. That's why they did this whole prog- program. And more than 100 athletes in Rio were banned. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than 100 athletes in Rio were banned. Uh, and I don't agree with it. I don't. Yeah. And so apparently um, the Russian flag and anthem sh- will not be played at an Olympics until the 2024 games in Paris. Um, that's just in three years it's not, well, yeah, their, it's, their ban was also reduced so yeah which I also found there they yeah because last year the quarter operation of sport cut Russia's ban in half to two years following a, an appeal and I just don't understand like because Make it how, make do you, sense. how do you <laughs> how do you like lessen a sentence for a whole country that like deliberately cheated and on such a egregious wide scale but then like so much so that your government your president was involved in it (laughs) like that's deep if you if you really think about it no i I, like i like that is it's insane deep it's insane and i feel like what is reductions prove like the whole point of the ban is to deter countries from doing this and I'm not saying that the athletes who are there in Tokyo shouldn't get to compete. I just don't feel like Russia should be represented in any way. I feel like it should be black uniforms or maybe a rainbow to show (laughs) y'all representing the world right now. Just like you, or you out here. Or maybe instead of Russia, you just have your name on your chest because you out here for you and no country. But I, they should, you should be done for decades. Like, because here's the thing, like, it's funny because I'm like, yeah, because Russia, like, I feel like Russia's always been such a powerhouse in the Olympics. And, but, oh, no, but it's like, they of are. Course, of course it's, they are. It's always, especially like but, in, in gymnastics and track and field, it's always. But of course they, they are. The medal count. Yeah. Of course they're a powerhouse. We're if they're always cheating. Going, it's always the United States, China, and Russia. And there's. And there's, look, ROC is in there. Oh, shoot. And they're already at 25 <laughs> medals. But my thing is, of course, Russia is such a powerhouse if they're cheating. And so my thing is, I we just, don't need I to have, also we don't need to have Russia in the Olympics. There's this ain't there's about so many me, but I'm about to make it about me. Make it about in you. 2013. Come on. We placed second in the uh I, we placed second and I placed fifth in the 400. So second in the 4 by 4 and fifth in the 400. I'm now a fourth place finisher and a gold medalist on the relay. I can't get that that moment back. Mm-mm. Like we were bashed for having sour faces cuz here's the other thing, right? You know. They were just Right. They were just banned, but we all kind of, there's always whispers, there's always rumors, but it was finally proved. So, you know, we're on the podium and we're disappointed because excellence is the bare minimum. (laughs) We didn't win. Because when it comes to Team USA relays, like if they don't get, like, and I haven't been on one relay team for Team (laughs) USA. Excellence is the standard. Because Mm. I remember, I remember, uh, I was talking to Allison and, and, I think she was on a relay team with like a bunch of young girls and they got silver and they were excited. And Allison was like, no, we here to win. 
that all fit right. So but we were really like dragged over the coals only for a couple years later for Russia to be disqualified. And then at the World Championships in 2017, they had like this little consolation medal ceremony that like who cares? And and the thing about it was it, they had to have several medal ceremonies because so many athletes were disqualified because of this ring. So there's so many layers to this and when you to like medal- sit back and be like, oh, but you know, there were some athletes who were possibly clean. But then when you think about the moments and the impact of such a cheating scandal, a cheating ring on yeah. the other athletes, like it's so it's like we were on the podium in 2013, sour face, and then in 2017, I'm supposed to get up there and smile, and but it's like, but no, like. <laughs> Here's all I'm saying is Russia. It gets to be a team, whether they are their ROC, Rush like Russia's in the name and got 25 medals right now. <laughs> like, and yet you should not be acknowledged. And yet, this. there's Nigerian athletes in Tokyo knowing that they don't get a chance to compete because they're better. It's just like make it make sense. Like I know bad things happen to good people but i'm just like we're rewarding cheaters while people who have never tested positive are not going to be able never to compete and and not because of anything and it is y'all know i am for the athlete at all times and i just feel like this whole thing is shady boots <laughs> it's shady shady boots i don't agree with it i i try to give like the level-headed like but I, I don't think Russia should be there, period. ROC or not. I don't think. I think if the country is banned, they should be banned. Sorry to the athletes who were clean. Sorry to that man. Who, but and we're not saying ban the athletes. We're just saying, like, they don't get to have a medal count. Like, they yeah. don't get to beat Russia. It's just a competing for. I'm saying that. <laughs> well, for me, because I always, I always put myself, I like, I like to be devil's advocate and put myself in other people's shoes. So I feel like you should be like, if I was a Russian athlete, I would be out here, Corey Carter competing for Corey Carter. And that's it. That And that's what, it, to me, that's what it should be. If it's going to be anything at all. That like, if you're neutral, you're neutral. But we're acknowledging Russia. I just... Liam wants to be a part of the show again. <laughs> the only <laughs> rock we are also being acknowledged is Damon Hoves. I'm telling you. Period. When, when when I got that message, I was like... <laughs> I don't know why my picture's up on the screen right now. <laughs> but, but, oh. I, but I will say that, like, that moment was so big for me when I won World. And that's, that's, that's why we do. I feel like it's and it wasn't because I got to stand on the podium and listen to um, my national anthem. It was because I actually did my whole victory lap outside the track because I didn't know where my family was, and so I I was like just I was just looking in the stands to find my mom. And like there's there's a picture of my I, I'll find it and I'll maybe if I put it up on a different. But like my mom's like I just like my mom's picking me up. My mom is tiny and she's picking Aww. me up and like. That was the, that's the moment. And they, and they stole that from you. They stole that, they stole that moment from several, from over a hundred athletes because a hundred athletes are banned, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and it's just like, you don't get a hold of your mom in the stadium in that moment and be like, I'm, I'm a champion. I'm, I, I, I'm a medalist. Right. Cause that's, that's <sighs> really what the moment is. The, the victory lap, <laughs> the money afterwards i just i don't know like between sam sam getting covid between the nigerians athletes not being able to compete between russia i'm ready to fight someone i've never been in a fight i've never been in a fight in my which is interesting because that life. mouth of yours i don't know how but i know right but like so for some reason people either like me or like i don't know but i've never i might want to get in a fight okay because okay here's the thing like i do have a mouth on me and like you know, when you're in an argument, you're like, I'm not, the, maybe I am the one and I should diffuse the situation or maybe I have hands and like, I can, and I can just run my mouth. We're not promoting violence. We are grown. I've been here. taking Krav Maga classes. So if anyone wants we, to try me, what? I'm ready. You've been taking what? Krav Maga. I, well, cause when I didn't make the Olympic team because of injury, I clearly I have a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. 
And I had a lot of emotions that I already told you I do not acknowledge or and, and deal you with. Have gone to Krav Maga. Did I say that right? I haven't gone to Krav Maga in like a week because of the show. Yeah, um, we need to get you back in class because. So I've been, I've been. It's a, it's a really good energy release, and like. <laughs> we can go down the stairs and do some boxing. Yeah, fun. shout out to Light <laughs> But no plugs. Well, they sponsor you. They do. So you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe they'll sponsor me. <laughs> hey, a uh, black woman today. Oh, I'm making sure to say that. Um, all right. But yeah, I just, if someone wants to, maybe, oh, maybe I can do one of those, like, you know, how they, I'm not a celebrity, but like, maybe I can get one of those celebrity boxing matches. Um, all right, let's bring it on. Get on, get on Twitter and can someone start a thread on people you would like to see me fight? Um, I'm ready. I've I've taken one or two weeks of training. Leave me and out I feel, of it, okay? That's all, Corey. That ain't true. It's not summer. about it's not about being paid. I just want to like see if I can do it. That's the monster. But basically, what I'm saying is, like, if you guys have some like people that you're like, hey, this would be a good fight. I just want to know if I have hands. I've never been in a fit. Well, it happened in one fight in my life. I fought my sister Kelly. Um, that doesn't count. But listen, the thing is, fight. here's the thing: is my dad was like, he was mad. At, he was like, y'all are arguing over nothing. Move the table. Three rounds. Let's go. My sister Kelly's six years older than me, and like, she, wait, your dad set the fight up? Yes. And here's the thing: like, the difference between me, twelve year old, and and my eighteen year old sister is was vastly different. But I'm crazy, so I thought I had a chance. And my sister's not really taking the fight seriously. And I got one good punch in on her. And my dad said he saw, like, something the, the go, off, go off go off in my sister. And he was like, ding, 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 ding. Because <laughs> he was like, that was the day Corey was going to die. <laughs> and he, was, he thought that we weren't going to take it seriously and was like, yeah, this is ridiculous. We're going to, you know, settle our differences. Not realizing that the women he had raised are about that life. Aye, aye, aye. Um... Yes, Uh-oh. do my energy. Um, my little guy had a problem. All right, so we're moving things around since, um, what time's our first guest? It, it's at 1045. That's why I've been rambling about oh, okay. fighting people. Well, then let's talk about the other topic that we thought we were going to table until tomorrow. We can... Well, I feel like we like we don't have, we, he's coming on five minutes. Oh, is it five minutes? Oh, yeah. I, I'm still looking at our time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. Well, let's do this. Let's take some questions because we, we shot out a lot of things. What we kind got, of? I'm a true, I feel like I'm a true Five Gemini. Five minutes until our first guest joins I, us. Um, I don't, I, I, I feel like I've done the co-star where like, I know, like I've looked at my, my moon and my rising, but I don't ever remember them. I but I, I feel so. like I'm like, diff, I'm, but like in a lot of the houses, I'm Gemini in like most of the houses. And then I'm like something different and, and a couple other, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring my, I'll bring my chart to one of these. <laughs> Let's do both of our charts. Oh my God. Um, okay. Murray Key's Mark always. Reza. That's Marcus. That's my best friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like I'm I'm very much a true Gemini in that like just as friendly and as nice as I am because Gemini is the twins. That's how mean I can be. But I only and like that when you see me switch into the Cory monster, like my little viral thing. That I feel like that's Gemini energy. Like I'm happy, and then I can immediately be like. All right, I'm ready to cut someone. That's the type of energy I have when I'm on the line. Um, what? What's? Oh, you're. We know. You're a Leo. Leo. And uh, she. Pers- do you follow any other Olympic events outside of athletics? I follow gymnastics. Don't get me started on like who, what, what anybody's names are or anything. Um, I saw something yesterday where like they're talking about moves are now being instead of like. The triple flip is like the Yurigarvashava or something. Like oh, they're yeah. naming moves. Yurigarvashava. <laughs> it was a Russian athlete that they were talking. Imagine this band, but we're still talking about uh, Russian athletes and doing spotlights on them. But um, because they were good at what they were doing, I'm not yeah. gonna. I, like I can't hold on like that. Like they were cheating, and but it was Russian I mean, gymnastics is like a. They pick you from like the age of two and say like they're going to be a gymnast. We're moving you. I, I actually, so my college, um, athletic trainer, head mm-hmm. athletic trainer, she actually works at Cirque du Soleil now. And yeah, she's like their head trainer. She's like big shot. But, um, 
a lot of their acts are Russian acts. And she, she told me that um, a lot of them talked about how like the state would actually take them from their homes to put them into training. Like it was r- rigorous. And, you know like, what's funny? From is very like, early ages. The type of person I am, like, I feel like I would have loved that. Oh my God. Just because I'm like, I mean, I love being like a kid, but also like, I see myself as like a warrior princess. And like, I always wanted to be like, now you're entering training and like, just like, you know? Yeah. And like, your life is dedicated to But at like crash. five? Yeah. That's, that's insane. But I also know that I'm not the right, like, I don't think you should do this for all children. I'm just saying, I, 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 I would have thrived in that, imagine. I think I would have thrived in that environment. I, I love, I love structure and, like, and, like, oh, training. Wow. People are going to be like, Corey's a psychopath. You and you were correct. Um, I feel like there was one more question, and then does that mean Omar is ready to come on? Let me check my producer. We got two minutes. I feel like Omar, do you see Omar, he's awake. Um, oh, I don't. I, right. I didn't want to leave my home. I just feel like, you know, when you watch ninja movies and they're just like in the acad- academy. I've always want. I've always been like, one day I will train to be a, not a gymnast but like a oh, warrior. Omar is here. Okay, okay we'll Omar's bring him here. Up in a second. Um. Yes, athletics heats start tonight for us, but over in Tokyo it is Friday already. Um, so tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so we gotta stay up and watch tonight. Oh, for the finals as well. Because I was like, we have to have our board, and I don't have that ready. <laughs> I have something planned for y'all, but like, give me a second. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring up Omar. I just clicked I, on him, right? No, it doesn't work for us. Um, but they'll it bring doesn't? him in. Yeah, but like before they bring him, can we play this clip? Because I love Hopefully Omar's. Hopefully, we can play it. There we go. Bye. 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 The bunnies, little boosties. Bye. So, if y'all don't know who's in the building, it's Omar Craddock, aka Omar Goodness, aka Craddy. Craddy D. Huh. Um, Omar <laughs> is a waiter. He specializes in the in the triple jump. He's a Pan Am gold medalist. Um, he has made how many teams have you made, Omar? A lot. Uh, four. Been on four. four of them things. Um, you got. You may you you're a bronze junior medalist. You won um, in 2013. He was um, the U.S. national champion. Um, you, do you, you have you you won one indoor, two outdoor NCAA titles. Like okay, okay. You, got a, you got a little resume. Wasn't there a Florida sweep in there somewhere? It was up in there somewhere, uh, 2015, you know. I just don't know the Florida the Florida, the Florida boys, gave, Gators be hopping. They be jumping, <laughs> like. And who would have known a, a Gator could jump, right? On land like that. Hello. Like, <laughs> boosties. Let me just tell you, he, he, here's the thing. He's eating because Omar stays cooking up some abs. Let me tell you something about that. Now you but believe that. One of my favorite people. Um, he always just has like good energy, good vibes. I've never seen someone as positive. Always happy, always positive. Um, and like you are, for lack of a better word, a specimen. Like your jump videos are always amazing to me. Your ab videos are always. I'm like, how the heck? I've I've tried to do a couple of like the hanging ones that you've done. I've tried to do a couple of your ab stuff. Right. I ain't got the floor like that. I gotta work. Right. I'm doing Jessica's beginner. Tummy yeah. Tuesday, yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Tummy and Tuesday. then I'm gonna come on over to um, forget it. Is. But oh my god, how are you? I'm the Draco Summer. You oh uh, well, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I'm I'm amazing. Uh, I actually just moved into a new place, so everything I set up normally I have like a nice background, kind of how like y'all got it popping, but I just moved into a new place, so you know, we're just trying to get it all together right now. Yeah. But I appreciate you wanting to bring a vibe in the aesthetic because you know how we like to do here. Yeah, yeah, you got to be ready for that. And you see, I got my goodness hour shirt on because you know it's goodness hour coming up soon. So, okay. can, you, can you explain to our fans Let us know. what We're the goodness hour is? Uh, so when I left college, I always had a passion for just obviously fitness. That's why you know my core, as you mentioned, is something that I 
I, I guess I specialize in. Uh, but you know, in the U.S., like a lot of people are typically um, not in the gym, right? Um, we we have like one of the highest obesity rates, and so I I, I just love fitness. And I just truly believe, I guess the philosophy behind Goodness Hour is if you give yourself an hour at max and at the minimum 30 minutes of true work, uh, fitness work, walking, running, actual gym work, you will reach those fitness goals you want. Uh, and so that's why I created Goodness Hour. And then the, the second half of it was for, obviously, to bring people along the journey uh, to make the Olympic team. But, you know, circumstances happen and I'm not there, but. Yeah, that's that's really the, the, the premise behind it all. Let's play, let's play that video of Omar so people can like really get get in I'm get sorry, into I it. Was, yeah, I was listening to Omar. No. I didn't even see a new video pop up. My bad. I'm not on my job. I'm a, I got you. <laughs> this be a team. Big team action. How like do you see the distance he is covering? Probably jumped over two or three of me. So first of all, can you just out of the pit? Jumping out the pit. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Yeah, I need that as a sound bite, okay? <laughs> put me, put me, put me on one of your albums. Let me, let me do the ad libs, okay? Let me get in the. Like that. Um, hey, oh, you got, hey, man, you, you one of my favorite on Instagram. I'm telling you, every time your questions of the days or, or whatever it is, it's it's, it's pure Stop. entertainment. Stop. 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 We need to talk about Omar. And first of all, let's just let's just talk about track triple jump because one of the things we like to do is break down track and field so you don't have to be an expert okay so it's like it's a hop skip and i i even i struggle because i i'm i feel like i'm a coordinated person and i i know there are two events that i will never try and it's triple jump and hammer throw but can you just explain right. to people I'll, i feel like hammer throw i would die um can you explain to people how you just the progression the phases of triple jump yeah, I mean, as you said, it's it's a hop, uh, it's it's a step, and then a jump. Uh, I I remember when I first started, my my middle school coach was like, Omar, you look like you could triple jump. You jump twice on one leg, switch to the other, and land in the pit. And that's exactly how it was explained to me. So you can only imagine. I pogo sticked it, right, and I landed in the pit further than everybody on the team, and then from then it just kind of took off. But uh. Yeah, it's, it's it's a very sacrosanct event, you know. So, it, I have a phrase because I felt like when I started hurdling, it was love at first flight. Would you say it was love at first flight for you? Definitely, hey, definitely, definitely. Because, I, like I said, I was woofing, I was woofing some tail, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> when I first did it, I literally, I think I I, I just destroyed my teammates by like four feet, and just like any, like I, y'all can relate. As so y'all can relate because no, you know, like we, we like to win. And so I'm beating my teammates. I'm like, oh, I'm the best. I'm a, nobody can touch me. And then everywhere in middle school, I'm like, I, I'm him. And then this was my first time doing a summer track. I'm Himothy Craddock now. You know what I'm saying? When I show it, oh, there, there he is. Oh, that's him. And it, it just kept going. But you know, I was that. Himothy Craddock. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it, it take a lot of patience. It take a lot of you know you gotta have some kind of one's core stability. You gotta be balanced, um, and then we have to have some kind of speed in there too, right? Uh, I, I think Christian put it best. He said, "Jumpers are sprinters with attitude." Okay, I feel like hurdlers are sprinters with with grace. No shame. Hello. Um, but we're. <laughs> We're just, we got another, because I just keep the clip, clips of Omar because I just love watching him jump. And uh. does not capture one of the reasons i love jumps is you jumps live is the event like y'all put on a show y'all i feel like y'all have a little brotherhood Straight all your friends but y'all battle hard but y'all talk mess the whole time y'all include the fans 
and yeah. she does it after that. So I'm glad you're here to like, so they can get the vibes. But speaking yeah. of speed, I feel like um, you have a very long approach to get your speed up. And so indoors, it kind of inhibits you. Can you explain that because of the runway situation? Um. So many, many people uh, explain to me that I, I run more like I'm a quarter miler, not like a sprinter. Uh, and I guess because I have long strides, um, mm -hmm. and and I and I'm shorter than most of the elite jumpers. I think Will and I Will probably has me by an inch, but Will's That's limbs are long. long. Yeah. Uh, but I'm more compact. I'm, I'm I'm if I play football, I could I could definitely be somebody's running back or somebody's yeah. safety. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, I, I think that kind of attributes to it. I understand that I'm more of a power jumper. I'm not a, a speed finesse guy. Um, yeah. So outdoor, it's like, hey, I got all day. Let me build up. Let me be like Sonic. That's why I explain to, like, I guess kids or anybody, you know, from our generation that still doesn't understand track. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know how Sonic powers up? That's me. I need to power up. And then by the time I'm in my transition phase, now I can turn over. And then, boom, there's the bull. Um Indoor, obviously, uh, is short, right? Uh, we, we you have a shorter runway, so Omar doesn't have enough space to really get up to speed like he wants to. Right, so right. he has what jumpers are called a short approach. Correct, right? correct. Yep. I, I pretend no, I'm you, a jumper. Hey, man, you're doing your, you're doing your hey, homework. I could be a jumper, let me tell you. You're doing your homework. But, yeah, that's that's it. It's, it's short, and, and I just got to – I have to adjust. So. And speaking of the fan experience – we got to let him know about o Omar literally goes to work. And when I say he goes to work, <laughs> Omar comes to, comes to the track, hard hat on. Y'all think I'm kidding. You think I'm kidding it. Yeah, it's but a video somewhere. There's a video somewhere. Omar with a literal construction yellow hard hat walking yes. off. No, it's not. I want to explain why I find that video so crazy. One. Real quick, I got to plug in, rest in peace to my brother Lone Star. That was his song that I played on there. And he from the city of Killeen. And like, being that I'm from Killeen, there's not too many of us that uh make it, right? And mm -hmm. so since I've made it from Killeen, this is a way that I can keep his music living on. So anybody that heard it that's in the comments, that's Mr. Lone Star, you can find him on everything. Yeah. So why I think that's... A crazy video is is not only are you covering so much ground you have to be kind of be like a hurdler in that your your strut your your phases are super specific to like you have to land on these platforms mm -hmm. and it's not like oh a tape on them it's like you're landing on these platforms and then you're having all of this momentum that's going horizontal and then transferring it vertically to go over the hurdles after that and I'm just like the athleticism to do what we do. I'm scared I'm gonna bust something. Yes, but yeah. like all that last one, he had to reach for it, for it yeah, and then right still up. convert that energy into ver Nicole's yeah. exceptional body awareness. Yes. Yep. Straight. See this this is another sound bite clip I'm gonna have to take because y'all remember y'all remember buddy um Max Kellerman talking about how track athletes aren't like athletic and all this. We don't have any kind of our dexterity, whatever he was saying. Track and field is the purest the form of athleticism because there's no, there's, there's no, nothing to hide, to hide behind. Like, right, right. It's, it's like who's the fastest, who's the strongest, who can jump the farthest. And the reason we get injured so much is because we're literally testing the limits of our body every time. Every time you go to jump, you're trying your hardest. And like, what happens is you either PR or your body breaks down. Like, those are the two options. Um, but let's get, there's so many things about you. Like Omar is a Renaissance man. He's a businessman. He's an activist. He's a jumper. He's a rapper. Um, one of the things I saw that during the pandemic is that you were on the front lines for black lives matter. You were out here protesting. Can you just talk about that experience a little bit? 
Yeah, um, it's it's definitely something that's near to me. Uh, just because growing up where I'm from in Killeen, uh, the first time I was, I, I had a, I was accosted or ran into the police. I was 12 years old, and we were, and and I, I mentioned this in the music. Let me back up. The music I create is is from a pure place. Um, in town, and can they have on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere, YouTube. everywhere you can find music. M I S T A O P E, Mr. O P. Um, from the neighborhood, uh, my granny gave me the name O P. Uh, and I'm a man, so it's Mister. You know what I'm saying? So I should have added that in your, your AKs. Sorry, I'm a net for next time. I'm writing it right down right now. AK Mister <laughs> OP. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but truth be told, yeah. So um, it it comes from a real place. Uh, and and I've noticed in in I'm gonna just say our lives that there's nothing that changes under the sun. The music that I created in the Red Light Special uh, was music you can hear from past time. Tupac spoke about this, uh, from the likes of Michael Jackson spoke about this, Marvin Gaye spoke about this, and you see how each time frame was different. This was the 70s, 80s, 90s to 2020, right? So uh, it's just continuing to forward the message like, hey, we understand what's going on in this world. We truly, we we here to survive. You know what I mean? We, we're leaders, uh, like you said, activists, we're businessmen, women, um, Mothers and Natasha, I'm about to be a father. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, I heard. Yeah, thank you. Thank we you. have a pregnancy announcement. We'll we'll, we'll have that. No doubt, no doubt. Um. So yeah, it's it's just uh, I've always wanted to be like a man, right? And in the sense of, you say what? What does like being a man mean to you? Yeah, to me, it's it's being a a, a leader. A real leader, and in the sense of the word, not not like some kind of dictator, but somebody that when when women look at, they like, oh, that that's a man, like he handling business, he doing what he does, he can well, protect. Well, that's a woman. When I look at him, like that's a man. One hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the fellas, like even when fellas look look to you, uh, whether it's your peer, somebody older, or somebody younger, they look at you like, man, I want to be like him when I grow up, not because of what you're doing outside in the streets, but it's because you are actually being somebody for the people and, and you trying to clean up, you know, what's been done wrong. So uh, that's, that's the purpose of, of anything I do, whether it's in sport, um, in music, uh, business period, period. And, and I like to refer to myself as a, as a poet rather than a rapper, uh, oh, yeah. just I, because I that, that, that has a bad connotation. And Tupac is one of my favorite artists. And he was a poet more than he was a he was a rapper. You know, like a West Coast rapper, as long as Cali girl. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so you were a lot of times on the front lines in protesting, and you're protesting in California and Arizona. Correct right. me if I'm and, wrong. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I went to a Juneteenth event in Texas, so I was I was everywhere. Okay, was in, in the middle of a parallelogram. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I actually, I actually did go to a, a a protest in Killeen as well, and the same thing. They had a microphone, and I just kind of grabbed the microphone and was like, "Look, we we have to, we got to go inside." Like I understand the protesting is cool, but we've been doing this for years. Like we really have to get a solidified plan on what we want to do, right? Um, and and if it makes sense, it's not like, oh yeah, we we just want reparations. This is a rich country. They could they could someday be like, all right, well, boom, here you go. Here's the money. But it was more so of like, hey, let's let's just get in here. What do we want? We want a family? Cool. So in order for us to stop getting killed outside, be with your kids and be with your family. All right, now, you know, well, that's another offline conversation with, with, with our peers and people. But that's no, just... I, that's just we, we don't that's do, true. Because we don't do offline conversations. Just bring yeah. it on. Oh, okay. There's a lot of protests, but I think you're spot on that, like, we're protesting, but what's the solution? What do we want? And I think a lot mm. of protesting is missing that. Because I, so, I think get out and people are getting out and because I feel like anger makes you active, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like right. you see these atrocities and you want to do something and you don't know what and you're just like, and you just like, well, let me just at least get out here and like, and like, and, and sometimes I think there's something it, to, to that too, right? Yeah, like we you all have gotta to know release. our place, and we all gotta, and when I say know our place, like there's some of us that there's power in numbers, so mm -hmm. we're a part of those numbers. But right. then there's some of 
who are leaders who come up with the solutions and the plans mm-hmm. and we follow those leaders with the solutions and the plans. So we all got to know how we fit into yeah, the activism. But, I, but the key piece is what is the solution? Yeah, well, Let's I feel not like, just get out here and make noise. Well, I think I think protests are reactionary. Mm-hmm. So you see something, uh, we react to it. But it's like we need to, like how Omar's saying, it's like we need to get inside and do the prevention. Yeah. It, it's like instead of like let's let's yell after the fact, like because let's talk to our kids, when, when let's the, educate one another, let's have right. these conversations, let's yeah. get uncomfortable. Because okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but like when the when the Derek Chauvin case happened and and he was found guilty, I was still like left with this feeling of like okay, okay. Boy. Because yeah. for me, we can't it, bring him back. For me, I didn't. I don't like. I want this man in jail because he did something wrong. But what I really want is for George Floyd to be like for his for for his daughter to like be able to have her dad in her life. Like that's what I want. Mm-hmm. Like you know. So like yeah, this man's locked up. But like that's not that's not the answer. Solve the problem. That's not the pro- like right. you know like that's a band aid on the real problem. It's like George Floyd's Bingo. real, and that's what I'm upset about. Um, right. So right. I love what that's you're saying. Exactly what I, that's exactly what I felt uh, when when that came across. And again, you know, social media, and this is why I kind of had to scale back from social media a bit, is because when you see everyone's reaction um, and there, it was uh, justice. Justice being served. And kind of like you, Corey, I was like, man, this is a Band-Aid on a wound that will be reopened, you yeah. know? And if not in that same spot, it's going to be a deeper cut somewhere else. Um and, and I feel even more closer to it because, of, again, uh, uh, stepping into fatherhood, I, I, I have my own seed now. And, and that's why I want to lead him in, in more of a righteous way. You know what I'm saying? And I think, truth be told, I believe that's the way we uh, combat this kind of situation, right? Because we're so conflicted as a people. Um, I think about like how, because I, I have my ideas, but like I would love to like, yeah, I, again, like how we raise our children is the solution. Say it one more time. Bring it back. You think like you know how you raise your child is part of the solution? Can you just go into that? Yeah. Um, well, one because obviously we're getting older, right? And we've 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 had our younger days. And as we have kids coming up, you know, the scriptures say that we got to train up a child in the way they should go. So when when they're in house. We, we have to let them know the truth of what's going on. We can't yeah. sugarcoat, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we see, obviously, the media can manipulate things. They can change things. But we each have a story that can relate. Um, and our children have to know this. So when they go outside, it's, it's no confusion. And it's not for them to hate any any person, but it's for them to know, like, this. these are the things that happened to us. This is the kind of order it went in. And now we have to break this, right? Yeah. And in order to break it, we have to come back into order. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, with, with my brothers, you know, uh, as we congregate, uh, that's that's the conversation. We talk about how yeah. how between us as a people, we are, it's like a dissension, right? It, it's, it's no real balance. It's kind of like this. It's lopsided. Um, yeah. What's glorified about us in the media is, you know what I'm saying, being in the streets or being a rapper. Right. And being a rapper now has a bad connotation. Now rapping is all about drugs and and all kinds of calamity. We have to bring back, again, righteousness. And obviously I I get my righteousness out the Holy Bible, like really reading, you know, not not just going to a building on a Sunday, listen to a service and then you back back a heathen. You know, we got to actually walk these steps. And I think once we start doing that, that's when we actually going to see some kind of change. But until yeah, then, it's, sorry. Still un, yeah, until then, it's still uneven. I think it's really sad though because like we have these conversations about like um, uh, teaching race theory in in schools, and it's because like they they don't want you know white children to feel guilt. But it's like we have to rob our children of, and you, their, of, of their innocence and, their and tell them like, hey, like this is the reality of like living life as a black human being right. in order. To protect them and keep them alive like it's literally for survival and you know that as and i having a conversation with my brother because we had him in a school and i say we because i'm 12 (laughs) years older than him 
But, right. you know, he was in a school where he was like one of, as I said, I was, but he's a black man in Georgia. And we had to explain to him, okay, when you go out with your friends, if something happens, unfortunately, they're going to look at you differently. Mm-hmm. And right. it, it was disheartening to A, have the conversation. Also, it was hard because on some level, he didn't understand. Yeah. So we also kind of felt like, oh my goodness, what bubble did we raise him in? And then when it was when he went to college and started seeing it for himself and seeing it in the media that he finally understood it. But those are real conversations that we actually have to have in our household. And you have a son. I now have a black son that I think about, you know, where we currently live. We're the only black family on the block. Is that where I want my son to grow up? You know? And it's not even so much about again like you said like we hate other groups but the importance of seeing ourselves and seeing ourselves in positive lights and in positive positions and doing positive things and being in a positive and uplifting home being in our children's lives being there to answer their questions being there to validate their experiences all of those things that it truly does as you're saying start at home yeah definitely definitely but i also feel like what we're doing is trying to protect our children, but like it's crazy because I don't, I don't want to seem like a pessimist, but like in reality, there's really nothing. Like I feel like we we, we can have the conversation. We got to we got to be aware. We, you can be aware, but we I'm like we aware. keep seeing that like it's like we t- we're we, banging we, our heads against. It's disheartening to consider. It's a systematic problem because yeah. it's like as much as we're not the problem. That's what I'm saying. It's like and so you can right. tell your you can tell your son. You can tell your daughter, don't do this, don't do that. But there's so many instances where it's like, it's out of you control. you weren't a gangster, you weren't in the streets, you 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 did all the right things, and yet you still got shot down in the streets because we're not the ones killing it, each, yeah. each other. You know what I'm saying? I want to acknowledge right, some of right. right. mm-hmm. that. That's the part of... Uh, and supporting, as Victoria G says, it's the tools that parents give their children and how to apply it. Um, aligning with the order within the chaos, it is calmer in the eye of the storm. That's from Albert K. Nicole says, we can't hide the truth about the history and how we navigate through society. Yeah. And Aisha, you make a very good point here. Um, it's not just black boys, black girls are affected and harmed as well. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Ooh, we got- that's, that's, I think that's what's, what's most important, again, as, as men, right? We're supposed to be leaders. And we're we're supposed to, our women, we're supposed to love our women. Our women are supposed to love us back, right? But again, what we see now is that dissension is is so much, we're we're at odds with each other when we brothers and sisters, you get what I'm saying? And and that's why I feel like that restoration, it has to come back. We have to, you know, get back into into order Mm -hmm. to where we can love one another. Again, like I said, I I get mine out out the Holy Bible and it's a, you know, if, if we were to come back, truly come back to these commandments, we wouldn't have black on black crime because we'll love our brother. Uh, I, I was just like, I don't like the term black on black crime because right. it's, you know, it exists. It, it's it, crime against because people people commit crimes yeah. against the people that are in their, in their, circle. In their circle. And so the crime exists, brown and brown crime is this like ev- because it's and like some you, of those numbers are actually higher than black on black. And I'm <laughs> saying, and like, oh, it, I just I just like to be very like intentional definitely. with words, words mean things. And I'm like, so the, re- the reason I said, the reason I said that is because outside of the people that may be commenting, when this mm-hmm. goes live somewhere else, YouTube, that's gonna be a comment. Well, what about you know what I'm saying? We could talk about yeah, yeah. yeah. We could talk about George Floyd and 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 Chauvin and this stuff. But then people are gonna say, but what about? But what that about- is the fact that like y'all should like other people shouldn't kill us either like correct things can be tr- like true I'm both sure. are wrong like and, and that was the past to kill us either right. like even if right. that wasn't a real thing which because it's I, not. I think what you're also saying too is we have to hold each other accountable. accountable and that's that's where i feel like we run into a big part of our issue is that if i hold you accountable i don't support you that's one of my biggest Bingo. frustrations yeah like yeah. no, no, I'm actually supporting you because I'm holding you accountable in love. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. That's that's the part that we gotta stick to. That you know we gotta hold right. each other accountable in love. I, I, I had a brother that was uh upset with me 
because he smoked cigarettes and I'm like, bro, that's that's killing you. Like, put it down. Yeah. And he was like, man, you touching me. You touching me. And I'm like, I'm I'm j no, bro, I'm 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 helping. I love I'm, it. I, yeah, I love you, man. And if you keep doing that, that's what's going to kill you or cause cancer or whatever else comes with tobacco and all that other stuff. Everyone knows I'm not I'm not a good friend. Y'all if you I am the type of friend, I don't care about your short-term happiness. Like, if, if I see, like, hey, this is helping, but, like, in the long term, I'm going to tell you about yourself. But I think what you have brought up is so powerful, so meaningful, and I, I love that you are not just talking it, you're you're being about it, and you're you're walking in your purpose, and I think that is so dope. We, like, I, just, I don't want to end this conversation, right. but we have Jade at it. Coming on next. Nah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But you know me. I love supporting black business. I love supporting track business. Omar is an entrepreneur. He has a uh, self care line. These goods. I actually, that's what's on my lips right now. Just a little chappy. Right. Lip. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and You're treating them chap lips, baby. Let me tell you, the the body butter. That's where it's actually at. Like y'all be pushing. Yeah. Body butter, oh, this, and it's all, so this good. all natural, baby. It's all natural. It ain't no preservatives. Um, it ain't no, no alcohol. None of that. Y'all can get y'all can. Omar's known for cooking up ads. Y'all can get personal training on his account. Um, on his on his website journeyglobal.com. I, hopefully, we have it in like the thing on the bottom. And he has music. He has a baby on the way. Like he's so many things. Um. Omar, let people know where they can find you on the social social media, on your website, how they can support you um, before we let you go. Again, as as you've already said, um, journeyglobally.com is my website. Uh, you can, If you want to book any kind of goodness hour with me, any kind of consultation when it comes to fitness, hit me there. Uh, social media, everywhere I'm Omar Goodness, and that's goodness with two Ds. Um, yeah, my, my child on the way. My wife trying to sneak out because I, I wanted her to get on screen. Uh, oh, hi. 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 I got a baby name, Mr. Doggy. Hold on. Let me move this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Come on, sir, face. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> black love. We love to see the the, the Craddy family. Uh, um, yeah, definitely. Omar, you, you, already, you already know. I love you all the way down. I love you since I first met you, did not, Corey? Look, me and Omar, I'm not gonna lie. Omar did not like me the first second he met me. Fables, y'all. I grew on him, and now now we gang gang. Uh, thank you for joining us for Track Girl Summer. We are going to let you go. Um, thank you for having me. I can't wait to see you back on the track, and we're going to bring on Jake Scepter. Yes. All thank right, ladies. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank they, you. I think they will. <laughs> but I think you can click on. I, no, we can't do the clicking. They're going to bump me. I've seen Jade. So, Jade, what's up? Yeah, Jade's in here. I've seen her what's comment. Black family. Yes. Oh. Black love. Hold on. She's so awesome. I, like, I was like, we we going to have to give Omar his own little segment. Like, oh, we're doing good on battery today. Look at us, okay. battery guy. Okay. All right, we're going to bring Jade up. So while Jade comes up, let me talk her up a little bit. Oh, this is, up. here she comes. Hey, girl, hey. Come on, Stan, come on in. <laughs> come, come on, on bro, I love it. <laughs> I'll, I'll make you sit, stand up for the whole fit because I don't, you know how Zoom interviews go. You don't know what's on she the bottom. No. It's, it's, nothing, it's nothing going down at the bottom. We're, we're here up. <laughs> on the it's top of COVID meeting. On yes. the top of <laughs> COVID meeting. So Jade is a fellow 400 meter diva, yes. a competitor slash teammate. Um, she went to that other USC. Uh, uh, the main USC, but okay. The <laughs> USC. <laughs> she is a 400 meter hurdler convert to the 400. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, 2019 World Relay Silver Medalist, also a actor, model, and graphic designer. But the biggest thing that I didn't know. First of all, Jade, how you doing? Thank you I'm doing me. good. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. We're hanging in. Where Where are you right now? Um, I'm in California. I'm in Los Angeles. Okay. Thanks for so doing. you can excuse the background. We literally just moved this month, maybe yeah. a couple of days ago. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very to, early over there, so thank you yes, for doing this. Oh, of I course. Had to up on game yesterday because I was so like, let me, let me, let me tell the story. So okay. first of all, I've known you. We've been competing against each other for a few years now. Mm-hmm. I've known Miss Sheffield, Latanya Sheffield. I've known that she's your coach. Miss Sheffield was one of the coaches on. I don't remember what team. I feel like she's been a coach she, on a few she's teams. A, she's a, she's at she's at uh, Tokyo. She's right in now. Tokyo right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Girl, I didn't know that was your mama. Never. <laughs> this whole time? We're together all the time. I know she's your coach. I know Coach Sheffield. I know Jade. I know she's your coach. I said. And I could be like, Natasha, you know, and she was like, no, that's not. And I was like. I was like, that's not girl. her mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Jade, I have, because, you know, we're actually family because I feel like one, but I actually really. Because I went to school with her sister, we were I was teammates with her sister. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I call her Kayla, but like she comes from a <laughs> family. They do this. Yes. So as you can see, too, Coach Sheffield, Latanya Sheffield, broke records and defied expectations. She was also a four hundred hurdler, mm-hmm. um, and the American record holder at one point, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe she actually broke it while she was in college. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, excellence is the standard here. Excellence. Yes, it is. <laughs> She got she got Olympian blood just like running through her veins. Like, <laughs> uh, I I keep I always am like parents like y'all could not have hooked up, y'all could have gave me something. <laughs> I think it's so funny because even when I went to uh, the 2019 Pan Ams in Lima, um, that was my first time being on a team with her. Uh, that like we were both there together, and so many people didn't know that she was my mom. And I feel like to an extent I kind of do that on purpose. Uh, because I do definitely distinguish, you know, coach and mom. And oh, okay. when I'm at a track meet, I'm at work. So, yeah, so there's that. But it's so funny because I don't think that we look alike at all. And so I feel like because of that, people don't really draw conclusions at all. So that's really funny that you didn't know. <laughs> no clue. So job well done. <laughs> How long has she been? Has she always coached you or was it just after you graduated? Yeah, so she was um, the coach at my high school and like uh, with my club team and stuff. So I did USATF, like club track. Um, and so she was the coach there and then at my high school. And then when I went to college, I, you know, had my coaches in college. And then after I graduated, I went back and trained with her. So I've been training with her as a professional since 2016. Okay. Okay. So tell, to I what, because we talked about this in terms of like, husband being coach right boyfriend yes. being coach how does it work mom mom not only being coach but, but mom, mom, was, mom 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 <laughs> american record holder like excellence is the standard how do we do this at the track and then go home and still be mom and daughter and i don't hate you and want to fight you because <laughs> let me tell you my mom and dad no absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. but so I, I, I need the tea mm-mm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I would say that because I've had that dynamic with her for so long, you know, since I was in high school and even before that doing like youth track, um, it's been very natural to me and just kind of like, oh, yeah, this is just how it goes. You know, like you're just trained by your mom, like that's just what it is. And so that was kind of the standard set for me. So it's never really been super weird, but we've just been really good at, you know, keeping coach and mom very separate. And so, you know, I because of all her accolades, because of her experience and then just the way that she can inspire people and the way that she talks and all of that. Um, it makes it so that I have 1000% trust in her as an athlete. And I feel like that's one huge thing that you have to have if you want to be successful with any coach. And so I think I actually have the benefit of knowing that there's literally nothing that she will do to try to sabotage me, to try to, you know, not have my best interests at heart. And so, you know, when she tells me to run these 500s, I'm like, I don't know about it, but I know she's not trying to come for me. I know it's probably a good thing. But yeah. it's, it's in love. Yes, exactly. And then when we go home, you know, she's really goofy and having fun. And it's like, okay, so when am I going to have grandkids? And I'm like, when you stop having goals for me, what do you mean? Oh, I like <laughs> okay. So, you know, we, we play around and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, we, we try to keep it pretty separate. And I think we've been really successful. You know, I call her coach on the track and I call her mommy at home. <laughs> oh, okay. I love that. And I feel like we've both experienced your mom and like your mom is actually like the bomb. The, 
I'm like, because I've always your said, uncle too, because your uh your mom's brother, he's also been, he was the coach on the 2012 yep. indoor team that I, I was yeah. on. So still, just excellence is the standard. <laughs> but like, I feel like I've always said, like, I could get coached by Latonya Sheffield, like because of the vibe she has. And your uncle, he was the coach Ron on Sheffield. That's Ron not, Sheffield yes. <laughs> was the coach of my like first youth team. And I still, oh, wow. he, what he would do is he would print out quotes and put it on your oh, door. Oh yeah, he did that. I, I still have them. Like, <laughs> I still have them in my in my house, and, and it's, it's it moves with me because yeah, I was like, no. I, you, I imagine he did that for you too. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say to an extent. Not, ne- I've never had a quote on my door, but I'll definitely get one. You know, a little text message here and there. So, um, he he got all the quotes. He's on deck with the quotes for sure. <laughs> So, I feel like both of them are just so good at, at inspiring. Yes, they are. They really are motivating, inspiring. Your mom was even talking to me this year on the road with me, like coming back from mommyhood and like. Love her. Yeah. I love, this is about you, but like, <laughs> and she knows that. Yeah. She knows, oh, you're not done. You need to come back. You just had that baby, and and, and the thing is, she she can say it because she's done, done it. Done it. And yeah. also, I just feel like. My relation I have with my coach is like I know my coach loves me down, and like there's nothing he wouldn't do for me. And I'm like to have your mom, like I know like yeah, she's gonna fight for you every step of the way. Yeah, yeah. You right. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Well, here at Track Girl Summer, we like to bring the culture to track and field. So we're gonna segue out of track, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Jade the person because there's so much awesome things going on, right? So. I don't know how you do it. I, I think I'm busy, but I, I'm reading this stuff. So actor, model, graphic designer. Booked and yeah. busy. Booked and busy. You currently work for, was it Ruggably that you do their graphic design? Yeah, it's Ruggable. I'm a senior graphic designer yeah. there. Senior. All while working <laughs> for the trials in a, a parallelogram. Like, <laughs> you also got married. But so I, I wanted to spend some time talking about this, right? Because I saw one of your posts on Instagram, 7 a.m. practice. Yeah. 9 a.m. work, then you lift on your lunch break on your balcony, mm-hmm. then you work till 6 p.m., then when you get off, you do freelance work and make time for your husband and just life period. Like, how? I'm a hustler, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, it definitely is a hustle. Uh, things need to be on time. Luckily, I'm, I'm very organized and, you know, kind of stick to my schedule. Um, but that's kind of what it's have to been for me. Like when I graduated, um, from USC, um, I went pro, but I didn't necessarily get signed. And so it's like, well, Hey, track isn't cheap. Like who's going to pay for all these trips around the world that you go on. And that was me. And so I've had to work ever since. So honestly, I'm really blessed that I uh, did get the job at Ruggable, uh, actually last year in the middle of the, uh, parallelogram and, it was, um, and so I just have been working there for a year now, and um, just to be able to have something that has a steady income and benefits and all those different things, like, such a blessing. So, you know, I will make time for that because it allows me to, one, invest in myself and my dreams as an artist, but it also allows me to basically fund my dreams, you know, as, as a track athlete. And so, you know, you make it work if that's what you want to do, and you just figure out how to make it work. You're doing so many things at once because Corey and I, and just in track in general and sports in general, we talk about how much competing in sports is almost like you're living your dream, but you're also putting off the rest of your life the longer sure. that you do this. Um, because we all know we can't run forever and mm-hmm. we, all, we won't be able, that very few of us will be able to live off of this when we retire from this. Um, so, you know, you're already started on your career excellence is the standard like I'm not going to put this off anymore but I can do both at the same time and be great at it I, I just I cause here's my thing after a hard workout and you are 400 and, imagine. and like <laughs> my brain doesn't work like exactly and so when I come home brain like fog. I like Bravo is like girl we ain't even got no more choice because I like to watch <laughs> pros because I don't have to think a, a yeah. lot of, and like I just want to lay down and not think and the fact that you go to, to practice and go straight to like your job <laughs> I I have no idea because I I know my body like needs time to like recover and just like in order for me, for me to function and and get ready for the next day because I'm 
because I'm gonna get killed again. So yeah. how do you, how, how? Um, I think honestly, when just kind of my personality or just, I don't know, but when I have to do something, when I know that there's a deadline or I know that there's something else that I have to do, I'm really able to just will myself and get it done. And and how you guys said, excellence is the standard. So if I'm going to get it done, I don't want to get it done in a janky way or like, ooh, I just skirted by. Like, I want to get it done in the best way that I can. And so I would say, honestly, like, it's even helped out in training because I remember there were times that, you know, you have short recovery and say maybe the recovery for certain runs is supposed to be, you know, six minutes or three minutes or whatever. But I'm checking the clock like, hey, I got to go. And I'm like, coach, um, can we cut this recovery to 90 seconds because oh. I have to go? Yeah, so I mean that definitely sucks, but I feel like it's made me so much stronger because I've been able to do stuff that I'm like, oh wow, I like I didn't even think I'd be able to finish the line at you know, cross the line with 90 seconds recovery. But now I, I know I could do so much more if you know my paycheck's on the line. <laughs> so what I'm hearing and because I asked you how are you gonna do it and like you gave this long answer, but like to summarize, Jade is better than us. Jade is better than us. That's and, it. That's fine. Like, I, and accept I, I, I accept it. Like, <laughs> you said, uh, actually, just better. <laughs> not quite, but I, I figure it out. I'll say that I, I figure it out. It on paper, it doesn't really make sense, but somehow I figure it out. So, no, I'm, I'm really that? thankful for that. <laughs> Hey, light, hard work is easy work. Like, yeah, that's how you got to approach it. <laughs> my girl magic, like excellence, excellence is the standard, all of the things. Can we talk about the one thing that's getting me, that got me through the quarantine? <laughs> this wedding. At the yeah. fairgrounds. Yeah. Well, we're going to take some pictures. I hope we have some pictures we on. Do. We I, do. I have I'm some sure pictures we have on, them. on the lineup. Um, first of all, I love, love, love that you walk down the aisle in your beautiful fro. <laughs> Thank you. Through. And I appreciate it. See, look at that. <laughs> Are you able to click in to like zoom in on Just gorgeous. The, Is there just, any like, way that we just, can make? Oh. oh, no, we can't. Okay. Sorry. Never mind. We, we tested it out. <laughs> I want to the clavicle, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. And Thank I you. appreciated it even more after reading your post about what it felt like, just the vulnerability of like cutting your hair and feeling exposed, but then growing into loving your hair. And, and I feel like we're sometimes pressured, not sometimes, we are pressured into walking down the aisle in this European slick look. And it's just like, but look at how beautiful this is. <laughs> Thank you. Look at how stunning this is. But yeah, this definitely wasn't the plan at first, but sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I was, because let me tell you something. Jay was like, First of all, she, she, she did, you did like, you were able to zoom your wedding to different people, which yeah. I love. But then she was like, for those of you who weren't able to attend my wedding due to you this panini. Pictures. And it was like, she just kept hitting us on Instagram was like, and here's the venue. And here's our, <laughs> every day I'd be like. <laughs> life, life. It was so good. It was such a beautiful and like intimate ceremony but you can just yeah, talk about tell, it because i loved about it the day. Tell, tell us about your engagement story tell us a little bit about your husband and planning a wedding in a in pandemic a, and a having to program. yeah so uh we actually met uh we both went to usc um we were in the same recruiting class so we started dating in 2013 um so we have been dating for a while and uh he would always like come because he's from the east coast his name is Aaron, and so he's from the east coast so for certain holidays he would actually come with our family because we were only driving to Arizona for the weekend versus it would take him all weekend to fly to the East Coast and then fly back home. Um, so we got in the habit of him coming down to Arizona for Thanksgivings. And our family definitely does it big for Thanksgiving every single year, um, minus last year, but whatever. Um, so yeah, so we do that. And so he came down um, and what we started doing is called uh, the Turkey Lounge. And so basically everybody, whoever, has whatever kind of talents they have or poems or whatever it is. And they go and they basically just present their talents or just express their things or whatever. And it's like really fun and lighthearted. And sometimes it's really serious because, you know, just extended family being able to feel that love, like people are really appreciative. Um, so for the first time, uh, he's always been talking for years that he wanted his parents to come down. 
And so for the first time, they were going to come down. That was in 2018. And he was like, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, prepare something for the Turkey Lounge. Uh, you know, just recognize that my parents are here and this and that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, great. That sounds good. Um, but when he goes into something, he's like in it 1000%. And so he's like on his uh, iPad and doing all this stuff and making a slideshow, all these different things. And I was like, bro, it's not that serious. It's just, you know, get up there, say thank you and sit down. And so essentially he went up there. Um, uh, he was like, hey, Jade, can you hold the slideshow for me? Like, as I talked about it, I'm like, yeah, for sure. So I went up there and it's called an acrostic poem. And basically it's like using the first letter of each line spells out something. And so he put That's together this poem. Acrostic poem. Yeah. And so it spelled out my, <laughs> it spelled out my first name with his last name. And obviously at the end, he asked for my hand in marriage and you couldn't even hear me say yes because everybody in the room it was like 60 people in there everybody screamed and said yes because they've been waiting on it um so there was yes exactly like literally he couldn't even get the words out like everybody was just so loud that's not how the proposal supposed to go <laughs> but it was really fun and it was awesome to have my family around and he specifically planned it for that because he knows that i'm such a family person um, and so he knew that's who I would want to be around. Um, and then when we came, when we drove back home, he had planned a surprise party, uh, like engagement party with all of my friends at my apartment, actually. Um, so the whole thing, he, he handled it uh, for sure. And so uh, we were like, okay, cool. Like, you, you got any friends? Any <laughs> yeah, actually all of, uh, he has two brothers and they, his first brother or his um, middle brother got married the year before us and then his oldest brother just got married in may so <laughs> oh, help me my teacher, i'm smiling so much. right that is so <laughs> romantic thoughtful all of the things like i i can't even so was your family in on it or was it a surprise to everybody i my sister was in on it i think my sister's actually the first person that he told that that was his game plan so she had all the pictures on deck um, and then both of my parents knew and he actually asked them like for their blessing. Um, we went to the Brussels Diamond League. It was a final and he that was his first time coming to attract me uh, coming overseas, all of that. And so they were on the same flight back. And on that, you know, 10 hour flight, he's like, hey, so by the way, I was thinking maybe I could marry your daughter. <laughs> and so and they made him wait literally the whole flight all the way until they dropped him back off at his home in L.A. They're so trifling for that. <laughs> Oh, you gotta, gotta make the young man sweat a little bit. I'm, I'm with it. I think that was the right move. <laughs> I think that uh, great sense of intuition and authority, this love, supreme, unconditional, ace of cups, divine. Yeah. Yes, I uh, agree. <laughs> I just, I, oh, so you I have, love it. So you get, you get engaged and you're planning a wedding in the, the pandemic hits. Like, how do yeah. we like navigate through that? Tell us about yeah. that. So we had originally planned to have this like big old wedding. He was trying to kind of keep it small. And I was like, I want to invite everyone. So, you know, 200 plus wedding um, yeah. at a vineyard. And so we had everything planned out and then the pandemic hit and it was like, okay, you know, October, we're good to go. Cause it was at that point, January. And then we're like, all right, it's cool. It's March, you know, everything's shutting down, but it's cool. And then uh, what was this May? And we're like, hmm, all right, it's all good. We got to August and we're like, okay, we need a refund at this point. <laughs> and so we had to actually wait because we had put all our deposits down um, and none of our, our main vendor, the venue, wouldn't actually give us a refund until, you know, two months before. And because everything was just changing so quickly. And so we had to literally wait until then. We couldn't plan anything else. We weren't really sure what we were going to do. Just the whole goal was to get your money back <laughs> um, because I've heard so many people who were not able to. And so luckily we were, and then at that point we sat and talked and we're like, okay, well, you know, should we postpone it? Or like, what do you want to do? And after talking to family and also just talking to us too, it was just like, hey, we've been waiting a long time. We've been married for, or sorry, engaged for two years now. Um, like, we don't know when the pandemic is going to be over and when we can gather. So like, let's just do it. And right. so we decided to do it. Um, and, you know, I was doing research and all that. Honestly, I was just looking for a place to like go on a trip because I assumed that we weren't going to have it. And that's when I saw the Fairmont. I was like, oh, this will be super nice to take a really nice trip that weekend. 
And uh, then it turned out that we were going to have the wedding. And then I called them and was like, hey, are you guys doing weddings? And they're like, actually, you're going to be the first one um, since we reopened. And so that was cool. And then uh, I talked to the wedding coordinator. She said that there could only be, um, they had like a 10 person maximum. Um, and so it was like taking a 200 guest list to 10, like really sucks. But it's so bad, but it yeah. Was really yeah, so it was so hard to tell my family, especially all the invitation, but I guess I didn't get the 10% cut. Yeah. But it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I'm okay. We, we got the Instagram photos. I did. And in the the for our next. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we did there. I had to tell, you know, my extended but close family that, you know, that they unfortunately weren't able to come. Um, it was actually Erin's idea to have my grandmother officiate for us. Uh, so that was super cool. So we were able to ask her to be the officiant. Um, and oh my gosh, she was beautiful. Like nobody, nobody knew that this woman is 80 years old, like handling it. It was her first time getting lashes and she was so excited. After that, she's like, you know, I've always wanted a tattoo. I'm like, okay, hold on, hold on now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, but yeah, so it was just super special and like intimate. We were able to have um, we were in the gazebo. And so instead of, you know, us at the front and then everybody sitting at the back, there was only, you know, eight guests. So we just had everyone sitting around the gazebo and everything was like inside. Um, we ended up, we, we wanted people to still be involved and in letting it be a really great experience for them. So then that's when we really invested heavily into the live stream um, so people could see it. And so it could be a good memory. And from what I hear, it was like, a reality TV show, HD, like someone was watching a movie. So that's the whole goal. That was all that we intended. So I'm happy. It was a good experience for everybody, but it was so special. Afterwards, we had, uh, my mom put together like a surprise little, we thought it was just going to be a dinner, um, but she put together a whole surprise, like reception type situation. Um, fun fact about Ron Sheffield is that he can sing and play the guitar and he has a whole band and he performed for us, um, my cousin sang for like the whole thing. It was, it was amazing. I, it was like my pictures when we first walked into it, that's the one where my mouth is all the way open and got a champagne bottle laughing. All the, that's when we first walked into it and saw this huge surprise. And we had some of my family from Arizona drove up. So it was really special. My eyes are over here like... <laughs> Y'all gonna make a thug she like you cry. My, like, listen, she ruined my drinks telling me his brothers are already married. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> you know something? Tasha sits there, I'm like, oh. Literally, men are sliding in the Track Girl Summer IG account. <laughs> he is trying to get to Tasha. Anyway. I'm sure they're trying to get to both of y'all. <laughs> right. They're trying to get to Tasha. <laughs> Me who? Back yeah. to Jade. This, yeah. I, I, this is just I, I just love black love and just and her family coming together to make sure family, her day is perfect. I like yeah, no, they held it down for sure. It's Definitely, you still gonna make this day magical. And, so and then you just gonna oh, come on my neck on the social. <laughs> I, and I'm sure you have even more still. Yeah, yeah, our photographer was amazing, and I just it was like very selfish of me to try to hold these to myself. Um, so I decided I needed to share with everybody. But uh, honestly, the hair, I had planned to, you know, get my hair, you know, pressed out, laid and curled and all this kind of stuff. And when it turned out that we were going to be going to San Diego, honestly, the hairstyle came because just logistically, it didn't make sense. I was like, I'm not going to pay for a stylist to come down. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, I could do this myself. So I popped in a couple of braids that morning. I did a wash and go and I was like, all right, let's go for it. And it was more of an afro than curls that I had expected, but I was like, I'm good with it. Let's just, let's just go. And I'm so happy I did. I was so comfortable. <laughs> and and cause you don't have to worry about sweating out on the dance floor. But yes. also if you like want a couple of natural hair tips, Jade gives great tutorials on, on the social. Yeah. I want to talk about that. That like, yeah. you, you do everything. So <laughs> earlier, the actor, model, graphic designer so tell us a little bit about your freelance work that like the content creation is on i'm the two content people over here i'll be like, <laughs> out i'm running out of creative juices tell us about it yeah so hire you oh got you yeah hit me up you got my phone number now <laughs> but 
uh, yeah, so I, um, I actually studied animation uh, in college. And so that's like kind of where I first started going to that. So I have a lot of background in like doing video and digital and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, honestly, that's like fun for me to do. And so I think it's really fun to be able to have these social media outlets to be able to put together these types of content and everything and get creative and all of that. Um, and so that's kind of where that part lies. But as far as, you know, the freelance type of work, of course, I do like different, um, you know, social media partnerships, but then also I work with uh, the USA. <laughs> I work with the and behind the camera. Yes, exactly. In front and behind. Um, yeah, I work with the USA Track and Field Foundation doing graphics for them and just like other people, I'll just like do one off freelance type of work. Um, and so there's that part and then the acting modeling part is that um, I'm a SAG actress and so I'll like perform in different commercials and all of that. Official, official. <laughs> Excellence is just the Natasha, standard, Natasha, okay? Natasha, 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 Natasha. <laughs> Us. But real she, casual. No, no, no. Like, real no, casual. No, no, no. She Sag told actor. us she was better than us. She, <laughs> she, she, it was real. It, you didn't catch the casualness of it all. No, like, because, <laughs> because, it's casual because it's nothing to her. This okay, so, so listen, I would say that this is also another, you know, how I said I'm not, I haven't ever been sponsored. And I would say that this is actually a plus side of it because I am able to do these partnerships with so many different companies. I've done commercials with, you know, uh, Nike, Asics, Delta Airlines, you know, Ford, like I've been able to do commercials with all of these different companies, Samsung, all of that. Um, and, you know, you're very limited if you have a sponsor, so. Nicole A, I couldn't agree with you more. Jade needs to be spotlighted in essence. I mean, these wedding posts <laughs> are at home, but if you go check out her, her social media, her Instagram, you'll see all the greatness, all the beauty. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh no, you're good. I just realized on Instagram, I'm at Jade Steps. Um, I think this is my Twitter that you guys have up here. Yeah. On Twitter, I only share the stuff that I've put on Instagram. So if you want everything direct, head over to Instagram at Jade Steps. I don't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> Excellence of it all. And like she gives, she gives great track tips and, and training tips. Like Remember how she said she on her lunch break she goes on her balcony to lift weights. She also sets up a camera and films it for y'all and creates content. <laughs> I like doing yoga, the stretches, the she just does it all. She just does it all. So tell us what's next. Are you training for any more meets this summer? Um, this summer I I finished up uh, actually a couple weeks ago um, in in July and so I think actually yeah you were there at that track meet in Irvine or <laughs> Mission Viejo something like that. <laughs> track me oh my gosh it was so hot literally I like ran off the track the second that the race finished my feet were on fire like it was so so hot it was I haven't experienced that since I've been you know back home in Arizona it was crazy yeah but but sorry oh no 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 you're good but yeah um that was my last track meet and so um now how I said we just moved so luckily I don't have to be on the balcony anymore every time I was so scared to like drop the weight bar um, cause I didn't want it to go through the, the ceiling on somebody on the cars uh, below us. And so now, you know, I'm able to weight lift on the ground, but going to just be unpacking and trying to get our place together and all that. So, uh, yeah, I've been eating all the bad food and ice cream and all Dang. that. <laughs> I had a whole thing of ice cream last night while we were preparing for this. I, I, mean, I was like, last Boy, night. I as you should, as you should. <laughs> eat next summer, right? Uh, yeah. And I know we said we're done talking about track, but I feel like we... Oh, yeah, we, we missed... totally skipped over you converting from the yeah. 400 hurdles oh, to the... Oh, yeah. Like, for me, I'm a 400 hurdler. I hate the 400. <laughs> I... Someone was like, hey, Corey, you can never hurdle again in your life, but, like, you can be a 400 meter run. I'd be like, and today's I'm the done. day. I'm done with track and field. It's <laughs> a different race. I don't yeah. like... And I, and I know we're doing more things and it's, it's over the same distance, but mentally, I don't it's like... Different. I don't like it, Natasha. So how? Are you how? not offending me? <laughs> I, I but the thing, the funny thing is, I'll run, I'll run a four by four. <laughs> yeah, no problem. But the open four, no. So how, how did that even come about? How did you make that decision? Like, and how was that transition? Yeah, no. So the races are totally different. Um, they hurt different. They feel different. Just everything is is very different. Um, I wouldn't say one is worse than the other, uh, because they both have their pros and cons, but. 
either way, it was basically that, you know, I was doing the 400 hurdles. Um, that was going well, but, you know, part of it is that we had that off year in, what was that, 2018, I think, where there was no championships or anything. And so uh, I was like, well, hey, you know, I need to work on my speed. I want to get stronger. And so we focused on the two and the four. Um, and so after doing that, that year, I went from being unranked in the 400 to then being ranked like six in the world. And that's when I went to Brussels and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, shoot, maybe I should, you know, stay. And <laughs> so then after that, I kind of just continued training there and all of that and, you know, got the hang of it and everything. It's still there's still some aspects that are a little bit new to me in the 400 and like learning the race plan and all of that. I, I got the 400 hurdles down pat, but the 400, I'm still learning and all of that. Um, but yeah, so it kind of just made sense to transition. So, And I feel like it, like I, at least me personally, I, I always saw you as someone, like it made sense to me that you could do the 400 because I just remember in college, like you would always be like first race out when you'd be like, I'm... <laughs> a blistering 400 that would stand for weeks and I'd be like Jade like we just got started like why are you so fat it would and, and, and it would happen like so many years and I'd be like Jade's first race would be like so crazy fast and then and then you're just like and now I'm going to go the foreign turtles and I'd be like pretty like to, to especially make that transition to yeah now or mm -hmm. just a couple years ago basically and then to be ranked so highly in the world I mean excellence is just the same <laughs> I said, I anything else to say but excellence is the standard and I love it <laughs> well thank you I appreciate you guys we appreciate, we appreciate you, you. we appreciate you waking up extra early <laughs> Join us, man it sucks because i'm so used to training early in the morning so i'm like always up at you know six o'clock now and i'm just like all right well here we go and so i've been actually able to get some stuff done around the house and do other little projects and all of that so yeah it's, it's been all right <laughs> well we thank you thank you so much for taking the time to join us one last time jade steps on instagram any anything else you want to plug the, the we all uh, have businesses here. Yeah, no, for sure. Just follow me on Jade Steps on Instagram. I'm always doing different like giveaways and uh, just all that kind of stuff. So, you know, interact with me there. Follow me. All that good stuff. And do I me like a the favor. Wedding photos. Do yes. me a favor. Tell your grandmother. If she wants to go get tatted that, I'll go with her. <laughs> like, oh, Corey, I'm not telling her that. I might have stepped with her <laughs> into this tattoo salon. <laughs> I'm about it. <laughs> I'll let her know, Corey. She's a nut. We love you, Jade. Thanks for joining thank us. You. Yes, love you guys too. Thank you so much. And thank you for doing this. This is such a cool platform. So thank you so much. Thank you. We're bringing the culture. Thanks for bringing the culture to this. Just, just, yes, I'm, for sure. Uh, track has so many amazing personalities, and y'all don't even know. That's and they have so here. many amazing stories, and they're to doing so many dope things. The people, not the, yeah, we'll talk about their performances, but we want to highlight yeah. the people. And Jade is like the, the, person. the sweetest. <laughs> Like most graceful person. <laughs> On the fact that I didn't know that was your mom, but I, I was like, she like is in the bloodline. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, Jay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye, y'all. Have a good one. Check the battery because I feel like we might have to push. We okay, might have I to still push. have twenty percent. Okay, so do you want to? We, we, we have ten minutes. Okay. Wow. Uh, well, so we got 10 minutes, but it, I mean, it's been a great show. We covered a lot of things. Uh, again, I feel like we can do like this little side because yesterday we were talking about mental health. Yeah. Um, with athletes in I'm Tokyo. I'm going to open the floor for any questions. Oh, okay. Then let's do that. And we can talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Because I haven't been um, doing research on it anyways. I've also been, some of you have been noticing that we're kind of like back and forth on the computer because we're trying to keep up with like what's happening and we're simulcasting. Um, right now, so I see that there's some questions oh, I, in smart. the YouTube, and so I just want to say we want you guys to act to interact with us here at FanFest. So yes, you'll be able to go and watch the live later on if you weren't able to make it here, but we want you all to come and interact with us at FanFest while we're live, and then after you'll be able to um, enjoy the replay on the YouTube. Um, I guess I'll also take this time to say that. I realize there's some technical difficulties with the tweets. We click the tweets on our end, but you can also click the tweets when they're on the screen for them to play for you.
really? I, I think that's what the producers told me. I hope I'm giving correct information. People want to know when you're doing the Potomac review. Oh, Potomac. I may have had time to watch TV. <sighs> Y'all, this. this is a full-time job. We enjoy. <laughs> but as you can see, like we're making a really big effort to make sure that we come with the real true tea. So we're having to do research, line up interviews, just line up all the things. So... I, I will do, maybe when the games are over, maybe I'll do a Potomac review. But for now, this is our focus. This is the tea that we're bringing to you all. And uh, we just hope that you, you're you enjoying it. We hope that we're bringing the culture, but bringing factual information and, you know, learning you all of our secret. Um, so do you want to, if people have questions, like, they can drop it. And we're also like checking. I guess I, I, I didn't notice you through that, but now I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I, I, got, I got a couple of messages like, what are you doing? Why are you in your kid? I'm trying to see what you guys are saying because I want to make sure that we're, we're keeping you guys happy. So for the last like five minutes, you want to like answer some questions? Sure. Let's do it. All right. Um, what are you doing in Hashi? <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what I'm replying to. That's what I was doing. <laughs> I was checking to see what you guys are saying. <laughs> oh, but I appreciate Aisha's great being like, trying to troubleshoot. I love that. <laughs> Thank um, you, Victoria. We're doing the, listen, we're novices at this. Like, we just, like. You claim it yourself. Like, I, like, I'm, a pre <laughs> I'm a professional journalist, investigative journalist. Y'all, I, I was sleeping last night and my phone is pinging and I oh, I look at my phone. I said, Corey, better take her ass to sleep. I was up at two in the morning, like, <laughs> talking to people in Tokyo. Like, I was like, wait, Sam's, and like, what's happening? And what is Team USA doing? And they were feeding me information. Shout out to my little mole in Tokyo. We, but got, I, we got a couple of moles and I was on the like, ground out there. I was, because I, I don't know, I, was, I wasn't I was thinking I could, because we have a Google Doc, I can put it there, but I was like, I'll just text Tasha so <laughs> I don't forget anything. And so I'm like, he, I'm like just typing in da data. So for future reference, when you get midnight tea, drop your, it in the doc. Put your phone <laughs> on do not disturb, okay? <laughs> like, what a, um, okay. They said, someone asked, but what about the people who had COVID before? Don't they still have it like the Lilla English Gardener? How does that work? No, they don't still have it. So yeah. if you have had COVID, um, first of all, after 10 to 14 days, you're no longer um, contagious is what they say. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure what Japan is doing in terms of that, but oh, because there are, there that. were people that were even testing positive, like a month after having COVID, but at, supposedly after 14 days, you're no longer contagious. Give me a second. I, I have information on that. Um, so if you've had COVID before, you should technically be recovered or past that 14 days to then be out of quarantine and allowed to yes. be in the village. And like, remember how I gave you guys the definition of close contact? Um, it's not only the 15 minutes closer than three beats with no mask. It's also during the time that you are contagious. So that's 48 hours before you get symptoms or a positive test until the oh, time. At the end of your symptoms. That's, I, I, was, I misstated that. Yeah. Yes. You're right. It's from the start. Yes. And um, until the time of the positive. So that's the, the range that they're saying that you can be um, contagious. And someone asked about, is the opening news setting going to be the start? Um, I think so. Um, I feel like we tried it. You like that flow? You like that flow? We we tried to do. We tried to. And I can't guarantee like there's gonna be like a break break and it's like today was just like <laughs> today, today was, was a day. <laughs> but I think we will try to start the show with some Tokyo news and like as we get into like competition, that the format of our show will change because we'll be reporting about, about the actual events happening in Tokyo. But we will also like don't worry, baby. We can give you that tea. We'll keep you hydrated. We're gonna, we gonna spill the tea. We we're gonna, gonna sip a little a little we're gonna do. What what chocolate? A little olipop. So English and Delilah got um COVID like the way before way the before trials. trials. They got it and like had had to come back, transfer. That's that is why Delilah Delilah's first race was trials because like she had COVID. Twice. Twice. Two of them things. Um some someone said something about the mango. You guys like the new segment. This makes me happy to know that you guys are appreciating what we're doing. Um, this one? Yeah, what do you think about why mental health is so taboo in our culture? I just wanted your thoughts on it. I think I think one of the things is, is, when you say culture, do you mean, I think there's two cultures you could talk about because in like black culture, I feel like 
Christianity is the backbone of our of our community, and so I think that there's a lot of like, let's just pray it away, or you know, and not looking to outside sources for the, like I just feel like in the black community there's like this pushback against getting mental health help, but I also think in the athletic community there's a culture of, against mental health because we're told like mental health. I always say this, it's so, so funny to me because, like, there's all this, like, mental test minutes is 99% of the game. And I tell athletes, like, but how much time do you actually spend on your mental health, on your mental test minutes? Like, right, you spend all this time working on your body. those things are also true. And that question is, is actually my mission in terms of why I'm studying clinical mental health is that it is taboo in our black communities, but also our athletic communities. Those are the two um, communities that is literally my mission and they're the they're communities good. that I intend to impact um, the sports community because we we joke and say that we're superheroes but we are superheroes with but humans with issues and our minorities that mm -hmm. as you so eloquently put that you know a lot of us are rooted in Christianity and a lot of it is also access and because mm -hmm. we just don't have access to it um, or it's Professionals it's that look like us, that professionals understand us. that look like us, it's hard to encourage something or believe in something that we don't even have the access to. Yesterday, I mentioned how someone said, you know, being depressed is a luxury. Like some of us, <laughs> we just yeah. gotta survive, you know. And so I, I'm, I'm um, aware that it's even a privilege for me to be able to access mental health yeah. professionals because some people just can't afford it. And so I think a lot of it is. Yes, we're rooted in Christianity and we're rooted in it being um, sometimes, you know, voodoo or, or that, but also there's just not much information yeah. out there about it and what you don't know, yeah. you can't tap into. And so, I, And I think it's like athletes, like I call myself the queen of compartmentalization. Like it is a skill and it's probably not healthy, but like it works until it's going to work until it doesn't work. So like I remember in college, I broke up with my boyfriend and I told myself, I scheduled when I was going to cry about it because I was like, you have a physics piece set due tomorrow. You don't have time to cry about this. I'll, like, you have to do your homework and, like, you, you get, you'll, you'll have time and to do it And we normalize that. We normalize that a because, lot. Because here's the thing. I'm not going to get a bad grade because it's some guy. But here's the thing. I'm going to cry about it, but I'm going to also get it done. Yeah. There's and, like, I, and, and I will say I had an amazing practice. Because I, instead of dealing with things, I just put it into, I, I killed that workout the next day. Um, same, same. But we've now killed the time. Yeah. We, <laughs> we have hit two hours. I want to, <laughs> here's what I'm going to do. Because I, I see questions still rolling in. And I, I told myself I was going to say. But if come you over have, to the Twitter and talk to us. Come to Twitter Track and talk Girl to us. Summer. And like, Natasha and that, if you want, I'll put a question box um, on our IG. So if you guys want questions and we'll, we'll try to get to them. Um, he's Gosh. here. We either get them in Instagram stories or on the show. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming. This is a good show. Thank Let you me... for coming, co-host. I, I came here twice. I forgot. Guys, I forgot my shoes. Drove all the way to Natasha's back. Came, came back for them. Um, let me pull up. We have an outro. Remember, yet, guys? And We're I, trying to be official, y'all. I don't even see it now. We are Gosh, newscasters. Darn it. Here. Where, Where is it? it? Like, <laughs> thank, it's, it's something like, thank you for coming to Trap Girl Summer. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to follow us, us yeah, everywhere, Twitter, IG, Facebook, follow Track Girl Summer on Instagram, YouTube, and now Twitter. And we'll see you guys tomorrow, same place, same time. And remember, no, no matter what time of the year it is, it's always Track Girl Summer. Track Girl Summer. Track Girl Summer. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. We had a good time today. We I, did. I we love did. it. We did. I love it. That was a that was a bombshell.